Hi, this is your host, Sopnil Bharti, and welcome to another episode of Success Stories. Today, we have with us Anirudh Shah, CEO and co-founder of Freelog. Anirudh, first of all, it's nice to have you on the show. Uh, yes, a pleasure to be on your show, Sopnil, and thanks for inviting me. Yeah, let's talk about Freelog. First of all, the name itself. Freelog means three words, if I'm not wrong. So I'm curious about the name of the company, and second is, what do you guys do? Do you cover all three words? And what do you mean by that? Actually, when we started out, you know, our, our objective was to basically come, uh, you know, look at the data of the customer. Then you you look at the data of the company, and then you know we are sitting in the middle, and then we combine all the all the data from all the worlds together. So you know that was the objective, right? Because you you have data across any any world, and we'll take it and we'll process it. So you know that was the objective. And uh, essentially, what we do is uh, we we are AI. Yeah, behavioral AI company that uh, focuses on the financial sector where we work with banks to automate the process of making uh, banking habits, like, you know, be it in the digital banking space or for cards or uh, any kind of uh, new habits that a bank wants to uh, create, uh, we, we basically help them do that. And we leverage the power of AI to ensure that, like, you know, uh, to identify the set of uh, use cases or features that a customer should be using next and in what sequence they should be using it in so that such that eventually they become uh, habitual users of that banking service. If you look at, you know, what you're doing is, and I was also reading the case study on Linode, is basically you identify some problem that the banks were facing in India where uh, users will start using their digital services, then will stop because what you identified was that it did not become part of their day to day habit. So that is why they would not go back. So I have a couple of questions. Just number one is that how did you come across this problem? Like, because in most cases, what happens is that we so see a problem in the space and then we try to solve it. So how did you bump into this problem and then you decided to solve it? Right, so um, it was uh, a few years ago, you know, when we were working and, you know, we were creating a recommender systems for banks. Um, you, know, we, you know, one of the challenges that one of the banks threw at us was, you know, they were facing this issue of customers uh, using their digital banking platforms. Uh, like, they would come, they would like, use a platform for a few months and then they would be, and then they, they would like, churn away, right? And uh, they were constantly trying to give them offers, you know, uh, you know, give them coupons or whatever to basically make them like sticky customers. But however, that wasn't working out, right? So they wanted to figure out why are these customers leaving and, you know, how can we uh, make them sticky customers? So, you know, that's where the journey started. And, you know, that's when we, when we look deeper into the data of how customers were using their platform, what we, what we found was 80% of the customers hadn't, uh, use the platform consistently and they were not using a variety of use cases. You know, that's when we started looking more into from a behavioral perspective, what is actually happening here? Like, how do you get customers to become habitual users of, of, of your product? You know, that's the question we asked. And of course, there are a number of different like research uh, studies done by Nireal, BJ Fogg and so on in how the behavior of habits work, right? So then we said, okay, you know, let's take this um, theory and let's see how we can apply it uh, to an actual use case and leverage AI to actually solve it for an individual customer. So, you know, that's how Habitual AI was born, where you, you basically look into the customer data uh, from for every customer, every transaction, every feature that he's using across banking, and, and then you slowly start to figure out uh, how these customers are forming habits. And then from that, you, you then figure out for customers who haven't formed that habit yet, how do you nudge them into forming a habit of using banking? So essentially, right. in a nutshell, that's what we do. And you know, that's our, you know, that's how we started out. Right. So you talked about the problem and you uh, talked about the potential solution, you know, but can you talk about the exact technology that you developed? And also, I think one uh, core piece is habitual AI to, to help banks solve this problem. Right. So, um, so, so when we started out with uh, uh, with habitual AI, uh, you know, none of the of the self solutions were sort of giving the answers we were looking for. Right? You know, none of them sort of optimize a long term objective. Like, you know, if you take uh, any of the the machine learning uh, algorithms back then, or any of the, the recommender system uh, algorithms, 
none of the off the shelf solutions were uh, sort of giving us uh, the uh, you know giving us the exact output that we were looking for so we had to custom develop uh, a sort of uh, a cascade of uh, algorithms that we strung together to basically come up with this where we had to look at like queue learning and you know see how how we can leverage the concepts of queue learning and reinforcement learning and at the same time you know from a banking perspective especially in the india and the southeast asian market uh, it needs to be extremely efficient right if i was a google i can have a thousand node cluster and it would be no problem right but here you ne you need to be able to um, process millions and millions of customer data points very efficiently right so from that perspective you know that's what our objective was and um, and that's what we sort of had to custom build and, and deliver that to the banks if you look at banks itself, you know, they deal with massive amount of data. A lot of data is extremely sensitive also because it's customer data. So what kind of data are you dealing with? I actually want to understand the, the workings. How do you work with banks? Okay, let's just take a step back. So you have developed technology. Do you offer it as a service? Do you offer it as software that they can download? How does it work? So I basically like you know we have a number of different uh, models of engagement you know uh, you know one of the models because uh, the data that we are dealing with is is transaction data but it's anonymized transaction data so there is no personally identified information uh, that we are using so there's no pii information at all in in the data sets that we are working with and uh, from from the perspective of the software so uh, you know depending on the bank we, we basically either deploy the solution on premise or we also have a hybrid model where part of the solution gets deployed on-premise and uh, the large chunk of the machine learning happens uh, in the cloud. Uh, and uh, another engagement model is where we, we custom develop the entire solution for the bank uh, if they want to, uh, so sort of like a co-development where they want to uh, continue to own the IP that, that we have developed. So, so these are the three engagement models that we work with. and. Uh, and primarily uh, because in the banking space, you have to be extremely flexible because every bank has a very different kind of environment that you work with, right? So, you know, in, in terms of the security policies and the, and the infrastructure that is deployed. Right. And what kind of banks are we talking about? Because if you look at India as a country, you know, there are like cooperative banks, then there are like state-owned banks, and then there are nationalized banks, and then there are multi-national you know, you know, banks. So who are your typical clients? Because depending on the bank that we're talking about, their own in-house technical prowess is also different. Right. So so we are, we are primarily working with, with the large uh, national private banks that are there, like, you know, for, for the likes of... Like, HDFC, Indusind, uh, Kotak, ICIC, and so on. So you know those are the kind of like large banks that we are working with, and uh, we we primarily are focused on those banks. And of, of course, we have started now expanding to other regions as well, like uh, like South America and uh, uh, and the Middle East as well. Right. Uh so now we talked about the problem, we talked about solution, we talked about how you're offering your solution to banks. Now let's talk about, because when we talk about the hybrid model, you know, where, you know, something will be deployed there, which also means that you have your own infrastructure there to, to run those services or applications that you are offering the AI models. So can you talk about your own infrastructure? What does it look like? Right. So, um, so, so when we go and deploy uh, on, the, on the bank, so, you know, one, uh, so there is so in the hybrid model, what happens is there is um, a small cluster that is set up to basically uh, anonymize and remove any kind of PI information, any kind of account numbers, and anything across all the transaction data, and uh, you know that gets anonymized, encrypted, and uh, and secured, and then it gets uploaded uh, to our uh, line node cluster. So you know, once it gets uploaded to a line node cluster, you know that's where uh, we we run our, all our machine learning applications, which then processes it and uh, and then uh, over a period of like twenty four to forty eight hours, all the the results get um, churned and then it gets sent back to the on prem hardware, where where all the all the results of the machine learning and all the recommendations that are coming out of our models get deployed on-premise. 
So, so you have that encryption decryption happening on the fly. What kind of cloud infrastructure you yourself have to be able to run these, you know, uh, your own uh, frameworks? Our entire solution is uh, is built on an open source uh, stack uh, which uses uh, Hadoop, Spark, uh, Docker, and so on. So, so we have like a Docker and, and Kubernetes layer to to basically manage the cluster, and um, and then we have uh, Spark and Hadoop to uh, you know for the data lake and for the in memory processing. And uh, then on top of that, we have built our own uh, automation layer to basically manage the data pipelines, to, ma to manage the data validation, to, ma to manage the running, uh, and, and the life cycle of the machine learning models. It is essentially uh, focused on, on, uh, on delivering the results very fast and at the same time being robust and completely automated. Where are you running uh, these stacks? Uh, what kind of cloud are you using? Public cloud, you use private cloud, you have your own data center. Where is it running? So we are, we are basically using Linode uh, for uh, all our data center needs. And uh, on Linode, what we have done is uh, we have taken, uh, we, we have deployed our own security stack there. And, uh, you know, using like Wireshark and other, uh, you know, VPN. And uh, so we have, we have secured using VPN and uh, we have also secured using a web application firewall. And, you know, once it's in there, then uh, all the all the instances that are in there are, are basically secured. And uh, we, we do all our computation uh, on Linode. If you look at Linode, they offer a lot of different services as well. Now they offer Kubernetes, they offer GPU, a lot of things. So what Linode technologies are you leveraging for your own needs? Because when we started out, you know, a lot of these technologies were available. Uh, we are we are focusing on, on the pure Linode uh, virtual machine instances that they have with their um, automatic backup uh, uh, facility. So you know, that's what we're currently using and uh, for, for the web applications that we have and for the machine learning applications. So that's essentially what we're using. And uh, in, in terms of uh, the other services, uh, we, we have not explored too much because, uh, you know, because these, are, these services are sort of suiting our needs. And then uh, uh, we, we have plans uh, to start exploring the Kubernetes uh, service probably like next quarter. Why did you choose Linode when there's AWS, GCP, and Azure? So when we started out, like, uh, you know, you know, one of the reasons, like, you know, as a scrappy startup, uh, you know, cost was a major factor. And uh, in, in machine learning, you know, there's a lot of experimentation that goes on. So, you know, unlike traditional web apps where you can just turn it on when you need it and turn it off, in, in the machine learning based apps, you need to be able to keep the, the machine on and keep experimenting with, with the different data sets and keep running um, a number of different experiments. And so, so for that, you need to keep the server on all the time. And uh, from, a, from a cost perspective, uh, you know, Li Linode offered, uh, you know, something that was one third the price of uh, AWS. So it was, it was a no brainer. And at the same time, in terms of the service offering, it was, uh, everything was bundled as a single unit, like, like the virtual machine, that had storage, the RAM, everything was there, right? And so we didn't have to keep adding these other services. So from that perspective, it was uh, excellent. Uh, uh, it was it was a really simple offering, so it was easy to get started with. Perfect. Uh, Anirudh, thank you so much for taking time today from a busy schedule and talk to me. And I look forward to talk to you again to see what new services uh, you are building there, leveraging AI, ML, and, and the node technologies. Thank you. Uh, yes, a pleasure to be on your show, Swapin, and thanks for inviting me.